What's up everybody? Welcome back to another Mullet Man episode. Today I'm at the lake with my wife. She's filming. We got some bread and we're fishing for giant bluegill. So all I do is take you some fresh bread. You can't do it with dry bread. You can make it wet and do it, but uh, take you some fresh bread, mush it on a little hook, I uh, already threw a bunch of bread out to kind of chum them up, and there's giant perch everywhere. It's insane how big these are. Let's see if we can get one real quick. There he is. Got him. All right, this is a small one compared to what I've been catching, but that's still. Oh. I don't like to catch her at least. That's a good one. That's a giant. Jeez. This is the biggest one I've caught so far. Look at that. That is absolutely insane. You can lip these, they're so big. They're hard to lip. Leave it in the comments if you have seen this many perch that size, or this many bluegill that size. We call these perch. I have grew up in Texas. I've always called them perch. I know they're bluegill, but uh, that right there, that's, I mean, that's the size of a big crappie. So uh, we're gonna be eating good tonight. That's a big one. Golly. Another giant going in the box. thing is a giant. Red shirt is certainly cheap bait. Oh yeah, it works. Y'all have a good one. Thank you, you too. Let me show you what, we're, what we've been working with. Bunch of giants in here. Another one. I mean, you can tell. Let's get back after it. See if we can catch a few more. And then we'll go home and cook them up for dinner. Alright. Maybe we're going to give it a go. Just open the veil and drop it down. How, how far down do you Just want Just drop it down. Let it go. You make it look a lot smoother. That's good, and I'll let the... Oh, wait, wait, this one. Yep, here. This one. Let it go all the way. Just keep, put the rod tip. Just let it, wait till it gets tight. There you go, there you go. Oh, you caught oh, the smallest one of the one. day. So this is a super easy and fun thing you can do with your family. Um, I've been fishing at this spot for bluegill my whole life. They're, uh, they're always here. I don't know what brings them here, but it's about 30 foot deep right here. So I don't know why they hold here, but they do. And uh, there's always been big ones, so. There, you got one. That's a good one. 
Yeah, we'll throw him back. All the other ones are like three times his size. So like I was saying, this is super easy. We literally stopped at the gas station on the way here and uh, bought a little pack of hooks and a loaf of bread. He can catch dinner this easy. It's so much fun and super easy. more sun's going down we're gonna see if we can get one more and then go home and cook these suckers up there he is uh, we gotta catch a bigger one than that normally I go through about three or four hooks I haven't lost a hook yet normally they'll swallow it I got these long shank hooks and it's working really well I asked for one more fish I'm asking for one more keeper fish There's a big one. Holy. Last one of the day. Another giant. Try not to get hooked by these things. Another giant. I'm going to come throw it one more time. I'm going to put a big piece on see if I can catch that catfish real quick. There's one. Another little one. Alright guys. We're going to head to the house. Cook these guys up. She wants fried fish for dinner. So we're going to go fry some fish. I'll see you guys in the kitchen. They taste me. <laughs> go, run, go run up to them. I want to see him chase you. They like me because I gave them food. Yeah, they're about to charge you. You get a little closer and they will. They like hissing at you. Mike, be careful. It's a <laughs> All right, let's go to the house and cook these fish up. All right, it is lunch time, and we have some huge bluegill to clean. We're gonna do black and bluegill over a bed of rice. I'm really excited about this. These are some huge fish. Come down the uh, spine, and you can pop through after you get past the ribs. Just like that. You want to work the tip of your knife down the backbone. It's a lot easier to work with these fish. They've been in the cooler overnight on ice, so their meat is a lot more firm and holds up. You can cut through these pin bones right here. And you can just come down the rib cage. And you can just cut that. And that is one. Look at that. That is insane. That's bigger than a crappie fillet. So there's your clean bluegill. Bones all the way down. No meat left over. Got your rib cage. That's how you want to clean a bluegill. There's your other side of that huge fillet. Put this back in the cooler. And you want to take your skin, put your knife just where you can get a little grip on the skin. And just follow that skin down, cutting the meat off. There's your clean fillet skin. Throw that away. Same thing on this side. Clean, boneless fillet. 
Pull your skin out. So I'm gonna finish cleaning these fish up. I think we got, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, uh, six or seven. That's a giant right there. I'll clean him next. Six or seven of these big old bluegill. And I'm gonna throw them in the pan. They eat good. All right, so I got the fish all cleaned up. I'm gonna use critter glitter, a little bit of butter, and then this Texana Cajun heat. I thought this would uh, suit this recipe very nice. It smells amazing. So I'm not gonna put a whole lot. It's like red, look at that. Red oil. And then I'm gonna put the, that much butter in there. Let that butter melt down in there. We're gonna sprinkle our, uh, actually we're gonna coat it pretty good with the critter glitter. That's what gives it that blackening look to it. So you wanna coat both sides of the fish. Bluegill are, I think, super underrated. They're right up next to crappie for me, for freshwater fish. You can't beat a saltwater fish, but if I had to choose between bluegill and catfish, I would eat bluegill over catfish. Or striper. As soon as this butter and oil heats up, you wanna cook it hot. So I got it on uh, high on my stove top. So once that butter's done melted now, we're gonna throw them in and then blacken them on both sides. And we'll put them over a better ice and it's gonna be amazing. All right, so I'm loading these pieces in here. Let them blacken up. That nice sizzle sound. So it's starting to blacken up a little bit. Looking good. Bluegill is a super flaky fish too, so these are holding together pretty well. That, uh, that Cajun olive oil actually is giving it a really good, nice color. Got some rice, and then I always like to add um, Italian dressing to my rice when I eat it with fish. I don't know why. It just seems right. And it tastes good. Alright, so I kind of let these go a little too long, but yeah, that's fine. Take that fish. Slap it right on top of this rice. And then what I do Take some of this and just go over it. Just like that. That's it. So I'm gonna let this cool down and then I'll give y'all a 1 to 10 rating on what bluegill tastes like. Alright. First, we're just gonna try the fish. Give it a little um, rating. So, scale of 1 to 10 for freshwater fish. I get bluegill cooked this way. An eight and a half. That is, you can't get much better than that for freshwater fish. Mmm. It's just so clean and white. I think crappie would get another half of a point just because it's crappie. But, uh, yeah, that's so good. If you want to try to blacken bluegill, go get you some critter glitter. And this stuff right here, you can definitely taste it. And it tastes super good. Texana brand, Cajun heat. Infused olive oil. That stuff's good right there. But I'm about to go out fishing, so stay tuned for the next video. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, and remember, eat good.